Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the irradiated world we wake up to in Fallout 4 is a far more dangerous place than the one that we left behind. A land of horrifying mutants, psychotic raiders, and conspiring factions, one ought to be careful when traversing the ruins of the Commonwealth. Thankfully, the Fallout universe also offers players no shortage of incredible tools for we former Vault Dwellers to defend ourselves with. And as we scour the wasteland and interact with her people, we'll have the chance to acquire all sorts of particularly unique weapons that can't be found anywhere else. Items with special attributes or characteristics that copies of just don't exist. Due to their rarity and often incredible power or quirky mechanics, you'll usually want to hang on to these. But not all unique objects are created equal, and some are especially fun to use or entertaining to learn about. So today we'll be taking a look at my top 5 unique weapons you may have missed in Fallout 4. Starting off, alright, this one's pretty incredible. So, a while after defeating Nuka World's old overboss in the amusement park's combat arena and taking his place, Periodically, you'll have the opportunity of going back to that arena and facing off against some pretty powerful challengers who wish to do the same thing you did to the old guy, to you, in the somewhat recurring quest, Amoral Combat. These wannabe challengers can be ignored for no real penalty, but each has some pretty outstanding gear that you'll probably not want to pass up. Well, after defeating around 8 other challengers, the final foe the sole survivor slash acting overboss must face will be a character known as the Rogue Knight. He or she, they can spawn in as either, boasts no special dialogue or anything of that nature, but clearly they must have made their way here as a deserter from the Brotherhood of Steel. And boy, will this individual make for a tough enemy to overcome. Protected by a full suit of the guild's trademark T-60B power armor and wielding a Gatling laser, be ready for a fight. Though, once defeated, you'll be able to take all that loot for yourself. And lo and behold, the Rogue Knight's Gatling laser was no ordinary one. It's a unique variant, named the Eternus. And while its core stats are identical to any other laser, it comes with a special never-ending legendary effect, which changes everything. Now, this isn't the only item the never-ending effect can appear on. I mean, it's very rare, but can be found on two other unique weapons. Normally, it increases the magazine size of whatever weapon you're using to the amount of ammo you have in your inventory effectively meaning you'll never have to reload until you run out of bullets. Well, for reasons we'll get into, the never-ending effect is going to interact much differently with this Gatling laser to effectively straight up give it infinite ammunition. Not only will you now never need to reload again, but you will literally be able to fire this thing for as long as you want. Seriously, zero limitations, whenever, wherever, for as long as you please. If this is sounding incredibly overpowered to you, it's because it kind of is. The way this works seems to boil down to the fact that Gatling lasers don't use normal magazines and ammunition like most weapons do. Instead, they're powered by the player's fusion cores, which they slowly deplete as they're being fired. Because fusion cores aren't a traditional ammo type, the never-ending enchantment can't interact with Gatling lasers in the same way it does with other items, and instead just gives the player truly unlimited ammunition. It's amazing. Bethesda also seems to have known what they were doing here too, naming the object Eternus, Latin for eternal. So this isn't a bug or anything, this is all on purpose. Anyway, what are you waiting for? Head over to Nuka World's Gauntlet and give this bad boy a go. Next on our list, we've got a weapon that's not quite as ruthlessly efficient as the last one, but arguably just as fun. Even if you probably shouldn't take it along the next time a settlement needs your help. For this puppy, we'll have to head to the island of Far Harbor. Specifically, the ruins of Beaver Creek Lanes, an old pre-war bowling alley just south of the main settlement itself. 
Here, after you've finished fighting off the small infestation of feral ghouls inhabiting the structure, within an upstairs office, accessible through an employee's only hallway, you can find the Striker, a variant of the Fat Man Mini Nuke Launcher, with a very interesting special twist. It fires not multi-megaton explosives, but instead, modified bowling balls. Nearby where it spawns in, a terminal can be found, which offers a bit of background information on this curious contraption. Apparently, it was constructed by a couple of employees of the bowling alley, for the location's former bowling champion, Thomas Davis. You see, while possibly the best bowler in all of Far Harbor prior to the Great War, Sometime shortly before the bombs fell, he was deployed with the Navy, and suffered a catastrophic spinal injury, rendering him unable to walk. Knowing that this would likely mean Thomas would never bowl again, the Beaver Creek staff got together and built this contraption, modifying a Fat Man catapult they were able to secretly acquire through some unexplained connections, and transforming it to be capable of firing specially made bowling balls. This, they believed, would ensure their friend Thomas would still get to enjoy his favorite sport. A really heartwarming gesture. Sadly, the Great War kicked off before the champion could ever get back home and see the device his mates made for him, leaving it to us. Once you've read through these terminals, you'll also have the ability to craft the custom modified bowling balls needed as ammunition at any chemistry station. With the backstory out of the way, let's talk about gameplay. Now, while a really fun concept, the Striker is what you might call a novelty item, as it's definitely not going to hold up well in combat when compared to any of Fallout 4's, shall we say, less creative weapons. With a base damage of 100, at first you might think it's not all that bad. I mean, that can one hit about half of enemies. Then you realize it's got a magazine capacity of 1, an absurd reload time, and the actual ballistics of the Striker are, well, less than ideal. You see, the biggest problem that I encountered with this weapon is that it is nearly impossible to properly aim, primarily because the bowling ball you fire just takes so long to make contact with your enemy, there's a very good chance they will have moved between the time you pulled the trigger and the time the bowling ball actually touches down. With the normal Fat Man, this isn't much of a big problem. I mean, you're dealing with a massive nuclear explosion, so being off by a few inches doesn't make much of a difference. But when you're firing bowling balls and need a good minute or two to reload, this becomes a huge issue. I found that expecting to hit an enemy at anything other than point-blank range is really a fool's errand. It's worth noting, though, that the game considers the striker's unique ability, you know, to shoot bowling balls, a modification. Meaning you can just take it over to a workbench, remove the mod, and you have yourself what's basically a normal fat man. So not all is lost in that respect. My advice, take it home, display it beautifully on a shelf, but don't take it to the battlefield. And if you do, don't expect to get a strike. Coming at number three, while we're still on the swampy rock in the sea that is the island of Far Harbor, might as well check out another custom devastating tool for destruction hidden in its depths. As a reward for completing the Children of Adam's side quest, The Heretic, which sends the sole survivor to confront a renegade former member of the faction who has recently been disrupting the children's operations, and whose fate you'll ultimately get to decide, when you return to the cult's leadership once all said and done, they'll gift you Adam's Judgment, a unique super sledge that, my gosh, is something else. The first thing you'll notice is its especially intimidating custom model and texture that resembles a normal super sledge, but with four fusion cores acting as its hammerhead rather than just normal flat steel. While its base damage of 40 is on par with that of a generic store brand sledge, what defines Adam's judgment from a stats perspective is the fact that it also inflicts an extra 100 points of rads every time it makes contact with a target. 
probably as a result from all the fusion cores you're hitting people with. This is a big deal, as those 100 points of rads not only effectively make this thing's two and a half times as powerful, but they ignore a character's armor rating, allowing you to really mess up most human enemies. Furthermore, with the right assortment of damage-related perks, you can get it to dealing up to 900 radiation damage if you really commit your character in the right way. Plus all that normal melee damage it'll deal regardless. Now, the one caveat here is that with all the mutants and ghouls we have to confront in Fallout 4, many of those we have to fight have complete immunity to radiation, rendering Adam's Judgment's unique effect basically useless against half of all NPCs. Nonetheless, the Blood Force object is still among the most powerful melee weapons in the entire game, and its cool visual characteristics make it a blast to use, as you blast open the insides of all those who stand in your way. For fourth spot, we, believe it or not, have another melee item that, similar to the striker we just covered, isn't going to be the most effective to use in a fight, definitely not compared to Adam's Judgment, but will get you quite a few laughs. The 2076 World Series Baseball Bat is a variant of the normal baseball bat that the sole survivor can find in the basement of the Jamaica Plain Town Hall. Now, accessing the Plains' Town Hall's basement is a bit of a notable affair, as well not attached to any in-game quests directly, in order to get inside, you will need to find a handful of keys, scattered across the bodies of a few unfortunate treasure hunters in the area. And then you'll also have to solve a bit of a puzzle. It's not necessarily a really challenging thing to do, but you can't just walk in. However, once you do gain access to the town hall's basement, within a large treasure room, sitting inside a small display case, surrounded by some other sporting memorabilia, the 2076 World Series Baseball Bat can be taken. Right off the bat, you might notice it has a slightly unique aesthetic, with a 2076 World Champion symbol painted onto its side. The item has identical base statistics to those of a normal baseball bat as well, but the real fun comes into play when you realize its unique effect. The stick has a quote, small chance to send targets flying every hit. What this translates to is that every time you use the bat, there's an ever so minuscule possibility your opponent will just shoot off into the sky in a hilarious fashion, providing some excellent comedic relief in an otherwise brutal setting. The actual mechanics behind this effect are pretty interesting too. An analysis of Fallout 4's game files reveal that the small chance is actually a 6% chance per swing. And fascinatingly, the higher the player's luck stat, the further your foes will fly. You'd think a higher luck stat, if anything, would increase the likelihood of the enchantment taking effect. But nope, it just makes your targets fly higher and further. The low damage, again, especially compared to the last thing we looked at, makes the World Series bat far from an ideal choice if you're looking for that raw practicality. But if you're looking for some good fun, well, then this item's just gonna knock it out of the park. And finally, last on our list, if two of the weapons so far, the Eternus and Adam's Judgment, have been mighty powerful, but two of the weapons, the Striker and the 2076 World Series Bat, have been really neat but not very strong, I figure to conclude the video, we should feature an item that sort of bridges the gap between power and novelty. Then to that end, I give you the Automatic Laser Musket. A laser musket that essentially fires in a fully automatic mode, without needing to crank the handle between shots. This is an exceptionally rare object, I'd argue perhaps among the most difficult items to acquire in the entire game, because at the end of the day, whether or not you obtain one, all comes down to RNG. You see, the automatic laser musket can only be found in the inventory of a legendary character or merchant, and the chances of this happening are exceedingly low as not only do you need a legendary musket to spawn in, 
but it needs to spawn with the automatic legendary effect added to it. And the thing about the automatic legendary effect is that it only spawns in attached to laser muskets. It's sort of a unique legendary effect to that end. But regardless, you need not only the right base weapon to spawn in, which is rare, but you also need its rare legendary effect too. So it's a double whammy. You need a lot of things to go right in order to be lucky enough to acquire one of these. But if you ever do get your vault dwelling hands on one of these things, you're not going to want to let it go very easily. The fully automatic feature makes the already moderately powerful cannon a much more useful tool. A 20 round magazine capacity limits just how long you can keep up the fire without needing to take a break and re-crank for around 7 seconds. But in this regard, a workbench is your friend, and the right mods can increase that limit by a bit. Overall, this just feels like a totally different object than the one it's based on. It's fairly effective, and since it spawns in as a legendary, depending on your level, its base stats will likely be pretty above average too. Plus, no worry about overheating. This bad boy gets an A for power, and an A for fun factor in my book. Though an absolute F for accessibility. And with that, we are going to wrap up my top 5 unique weapons in Fallout 4. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these tools for inflicting turmoil did you find to be the most fun, or just most powerful? And what custom items in the Fallout universe deserve a mention on this channel that I've yet to deliver? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. And again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.